welcome back. So we're going to talk about the toolbar. We've talked about the icons in the toolbar. We've talked a little bit about the individual menu items in the toolbar, where they each have their own ID, they have their own title, they have their own icon, they have some information about how they're supposed to be shown, and there's a little something special here about action search, but we'll get to that. For the uh, exit and setting, uh, we just have the ID, the title, the icon, and some information about how to lay it out, and also the order. Uh, gosh, I, you know, I've noticed that the emulator makes my fan go. I guess there's no way around it. All right, let's switch now to our code view. Take a look at what's going on in terms of setting up our toolbar and how it behaves. So, to take a little bit of a look at what we're doing, the code that's generated by Android Studio has our main activity extending app compat activity which is a compatibility version of an application activity. Exactly what an activity is, we're going to get into next, but it's uh, an Android um, abstraction that controls a screen and has a certain life cycle. In the beginning of the life cycle, this onCreate function gets called. That's why we kept, keep calling it sort of the main. It gets past some information that perhaps it saved from the last time it was created. But we'll talk about that next time. So we call our superclass, our superclass's version of onCreate, because this is our main activity, but we're extending app compat activity, which needs to do some work on create. Then we're calling set content view with our XML main layout. And then here we're calling init toolbar, which is just this little function that I wrote down here to sort of encapsulate what we're going to do with the toolbar. And it shows you a little bit about what's possible. So first I need to get a reference to my toolbar and we have our vener venerable, not vulnerable, function find view by ID. And we want our toolbar. And if you're wondering where we define the toolbar, in fact, if you uh, get a you know simple um, uh, project from Android Studio, I'm trying to remember the exact th uh, thing that uh, uh, that uh, with the name, it will put this uh, code in your XML layout for you. Also, if you look at the Android documentation that is linked from the our classes site, setting up the app bar, it will tell you, hey, this is what your toolbar should look like. In fact, if you look at this, it is identical to this, except no elevation, I guess. So this is a toolbar that is going to go across the top of our um, main activity. It's going to match the parent. It's going to be action bar uh, size, which is defined in our style. And it has uh, sort of the styles, uh, background, and theme. And what we're going to do here is we're going to customize it a little bit. By default, the toolbar will have whatever your project name is, but you can set that to whatever you want. So maybe it's something that's similar to your app's name, but not exactly uh, equal to your app's name. Here I set it to almost app name. Then you do have to tell Android um, that you are using this toolbar as an action bar. So set support action bar. This is a little like set content view, sort of telling the Android runtime 
about your GUI, uh, about, you know, passing it the data of your, your GUI so that it knows that uh, you want it to sort of bring that GUI to life. And similarly here, we're taking the XML from the toolbar and we're actually telling it really hook this up to everything. So the user can see and interact with this toolbar. Okay, and now here um, we're doing something fun. We're going to set the navigation icon, which is this thing. So the navigation icon appears before the name, and then these are the other icons. And they're not actually so visually well matched. Sort of typical for me, but. One of the things that we're doing here is actually sort of sweet that I uh, did not mention when we were talking about other kinds of visual assets, but I'm going to mention it here, and that is there's a namespace, android.r.drawable, which has a bunch of icons built in. Uh, you can also download icons from Android. Uh, they have a site where they have free icons. But what's neat about this is you don't even have to put anything in your drawable. So if you're looking for icons, there's a whole bunch of them. And as I write in my dialog here, I actually like the hamburger icon, which is those three lines, three parallel uh, horizontal lines, but I can't seem to find it. So if anyone out there can find a hamburger icon for me, <laughs> I'll, I'll be your best friend. Um, yeah, I found it on some, uh, I mean, I can find an external one that I can download. Uh, and uh, it's supposedly called IC underscore menu, but there is no IC underscore menu here. There's only menu with other things. So, all right, let's, we'll just do, we'll do menu more, let's say. Let's see what that looks like. So that's the navigation icon. And then, then what we're doing is going to look very similar to what we do with buttons. We get references to buttons and we set the on-click listener for the button, which will call us back if the button is clicked. We can actually do this for the navigation icon. We are going to, on the toolbar, set navigation on-click listener. And, you know, this is what I actually typed. And it, again, it looks exactly like the button case. But it's a new view.onclick listener. So this is an inline class. This is an inline class definition, where the important class is the on. The important function is the on click function, and on click, I'm doing this thing here called toast. Dot make text get application context. It's basically going to put up a message. Because if we build this, I mean, if our fan is going to hum, we may as well use it. And here we go, apply changes, restart activity. And that's, that doesn't look so good. But if we click it, oh, click navigation icon. That was exciting. So it shows us this, this little message, which is called a toast, that then disappears on its own. That's what this does. We're setting our navigation on click listener to set, set up a toast or display a toast. So that's the only thing we're doing with our toolbar, which is not super exciting. I want to actually come down all the way down here on options, item selected. This is a, uh, an, a function that is in app compatibility. It's about whether you've selected a menu item. And if you have selected a menu item, you get a callback and it tells you what menu item you selected. The first thing we do is we call get item ID on this item that was returned to us. And then we have what is a glorified switch statement, though we don't use that syntax. If we would just have cascaded ifs and recall from our menu, we have search settings and exit for reasons that will become clear. Search is not uh, dealt with here, but settings, if ID is ID action settings, we're going to report that we were clicked. And here, just to fill us in, it's toast length long. It's length long or short. It's, it's just a way of showing a message. It's almost, it's, a, it's useful for debugging, mainly. 
And here is uh, an important function that I like to put in all of my Android uh, projects, and I hope you will too, starting now. And that is uh, an exit option. So I don't know how much you know about Android, but at any time in Android, you have a back button, a main button, and a show me the stack of running uh, activities button. So the main button just brings me back to my, my main uh, Android um, screen where I can then uh, look for different applications to run or uh, scroll through my screen, you know, which isn't too exciting, and do things. Uh, the show me the stack of activities shows what has been running on my phone most recently it was this app and if I want to exit from this app I say show me the stack and I have to sort of click and pull this thing off and that will kill the app that's effective but slow so it's sort of nice to actually have uh, an exit option and if it's visible as an icon, when you click the icon, boop, the application dies. So, and then, uh, you yeah. know, let's see, I think this is called, this is called Demo Layout Toolbar. Demo Layout Toolbar. So we run it again, boop, go it again, run it again. Okay. Uh, here, settings clicked. All right, that's this code right here. So this is I'm I'm doing a menu. If I go into you know let's just go. Uh, this is not strictly necessary, but what the heck we have the the time. If instead of icons, I insist that these are done textually. We're going to leave uh, search. I keep treating search specially, but when you see what search can do, you will know why. Okay, now we have this overflow menu, which you can tell I didn't write any code for this. This is stuff that's being given to us by App Compat Activity, but it shows us this one icon, it shows us the navigation icon, but all the other menu items are in this overflow and it's done by name only. So exit will exit. Yeah, settings will give us this toast. Okay, enough is enough. Let's let's search. So that's our on option on options item select. What about this? On create options menu. So this on option item select is a callback for when somebody selects a menu item. On create options menu is the callback that the framework gives us when it is creating our options menu. And of course it gives us a reference to the menu that it is creating because it can't create more than one menu. In our case, we're really interested in uh, the main menu. And that's the first thing that we are going to do here. And this inflate operation is what the framework can, uh, calls taking the XML and making it into um, objects that you can interact with. So this is a little bit more manual. It's a more manual version of set content view. If Android were more consistent, you would inflate activity main, but instead you send it to set content view. So we need a global menu inflator, and we then inflate our main menu. You can have me you can have several menus. Main menu is down here, right? Menu main, that's what we call it. All right, now what we're actually doing here is uh, it's probably the, the fanciest code we've done so far, but it's it's not even super fancy. So I've inflated my main menu which allows the um, 
framework to actually display it to the user and hooks up uh, all the callbacks and stuff. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, but callbacks from the perspective of the uh, of the framework. And now we're going to hook up some special code to support search. And I did this based on the Android tutorials. I think there's something down, you know, app bar utility method. So if you if you click through this and actually read uh, more about the the app bar, there's some there's some nice things in there. All right, this this looks familiar. On option item select. I'm just looking at that. All right, so we're going to find our search view object, and we're going to get that by uh, in the menu that we're past, we're going to find the action search because it's part of the menu, and that's our search item. Then we're going to do this thing. This is a static method, menu item compat, because everything is compat here. It's a backwards compatible library. We're getting the action view. This is just a function you sort of have to know about in the documentation. And once we get this search view object, what we can do is we can configure it. And what we're going to configure our search view object to do is get submit button enabled uh, is going to uh, activate some code that when you type in your search term, it's going to give you a button to submit it. What's nice about this is it sort of standardizes how users use your search view tool in your toolbar. And then we are going to <coughs> excuse me, set on query text listener. The on query text listener is the callback that you get when the user submits some text. Sorry, it is the it's sort of the super class uh, where you can define uh, callbacks when the user submits and even when the user just changes some text. So you can get called on every single character that a user types in your query box. What might this be useful for? Why would you want to get called back on every single character? Well, these days, most query forms try to give you this sort of quick feedback. So if you type ON, you want to actually give maybe a list of the top five uh, hits on a query that begins with ON. You would do that using this on query text chain, text change callback. We're not going to do that. What we are going to do is, again, we're setting, setting a listener object to an inline class and use search view on query text listener. Set on query text listener, on query text listener. That's not a coincidence. It's the same type name. It's a convention, though. And we have two functions in here that are important. One is the callback we get every time the text changes, which we're going to ignore. And then we're going to get a callback when the user actually submits the text. And then we're going to do a toast saying, hey, the user searched for this text. Okay, all this might sound sort of confusing at this point. So what does it actually look like? When you run it, because I think once you once we run it, you'll see it's not actually all that confusing. Uh, let's just assume this is a new thing. Okay, so click the navigation icon, click settings. Oh, you've seen all this before. Now, ready? Boom! Click search. Sweet. So what's happened? First of all, we've gotten a back button that will take us back to our previous view. Search. No search. Search. No search. What would you guys do if I just spent 20 minutes doing that? <laughs> Report me to the tenure police. Okay, so uh, when you have a search term, if you this actually is the submit button, which I had no idea. I haven't seen that, but I guess this is what Android is standardizing. So if you try to submit a null um, search, I've configured it so that it won't let you do that. So it gives you sort of a hint that you're not actually searching for anything. 
Um, so if you are searching for good times, and uh, aren't we all, you can abandon your search. And again, I didn't write code to do this. This all this whole search view thing, that's, that's, that's what I'm using this built-in function for because I get all this functionality for free. If I submit, then I'm searching for good times. Look at that. I get called back with my good times search. And in fact, I don't even get dismissed. It's up to me in the code. I could dismiss this if uh, it was a legal search and I want to take you to a new screen. Taking you to a new screen is usually taking you to a new activity, which is what we're going to get to next. Or I can just uh, bail on that and search for something nonsensical. And there we go. And eventually just go back to my app. So that's, uh, that's it. Y'all, that's the big event, the search view in your menu uh, makes heavy use of the toolbar. This is not possible uh, with the menu button or action bar. This is what the future looks like. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's getting late. Uh, and so I think I know what my future looks like, which is the end of this uh, video, which I believe is the longest I've made. Bye-bye.